Hello class, today we're going to be playing Simon Says. So when Simon says, touch your head, you touch your head. When Simon says, touch your nose, you touch your nose. When Simon doesn't say anything, you keep your hands what Simon said until the last man standing. Simon says, touch your nose. Simon says, touch your mouth. Simon says, touch your toes. Touch your knees. Put your hips. Simon says, put your hand on your nose. I am so confused. I thought we were playing a game of Simon Says, but they were not following the rules. Did you notice every time Simon said to do something, they didn't do it. They did whatever they wanted to do. But when no one said, when it wasn't Simon Says, then they seem to do it. You know, this kind of reminds me of a story in the Bible. It just makes me think of, what's that word? What's that word? Oh, that's right, rebel. This reminds me of what it means to rebel against God's word. What does it mean to rebel? Oh, Ruthie, that's a really good question. What does it mean to rebel? Do you know what it means to rebel? Yeah. Rebel means to stand against or to oppose the one in authority. So in our game of Simon Says, we know that Simon was the authority and they rebelled. Who has the authority in our lives? Do you think it's our parents, mm -hmm. your mom, your dad? Yeah, that's right. Your teachers, your leaders, your pastor, and God, God too is an authority in our lives. As we will learn today, all people have rebelled against God. You recently learned the memory verse, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us, every single one of us. What does that mean? What are the consequences? We will find that out. After the great flood, God told Noah and his sons to grow their families and fill the earth. As their families grew, the people started to travel through the land. At this time, everyone in the world spoke the same language. One day, the people traveled through a valley. They liked it there and decided to stay. Yeah, this is perfect! We should stay here! Yeah. 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 Wow. This is nice! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We, stay here. we don't want to be scattered all over this earth! Yeah! yeah. The tower's so big, it could touch the sky. Yeah! yeah! The tower can make us so famous! It united! And so, the people made bricks out of clay and baked them in the fire to make stones. Then, they used the stones to start building the tower. They wanted glory for themselves instead of God. But God is greater than anyone. God created people to give glory to him alone. God came down to look at the tower. God said, if they are doing this, they will keep thinking up more wrong things to do. So God mixed up the people's words. Instead of everyone speaking the same language, everyone spoke different languages. All the hygiene's very so nice. Fight for next buffalo sauce. When people tried to make plans, they could not understand what other people were saying. If one workman said, hand me another brick, nobody else knew what he wanted. The people had to stop building the city. Families had to move away from each other to live with people they could understand. God made it so the people did just what he had told them to do after the flood. They were scattered all over the world. The city with the unfinished tower was called Babel. isn't it? You see, God had commanded Noah and his sons to grow their families and to fill the entire earth. But is that what they did? No, you're right. They disobeyed God. They disobeyed God's command. They rebelled against them. Remember, that was going their own way instead of going God's way. Let's see what God's word says. Turn to Genesis chapter 11, verses 5. 
And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. You see, God still had to come down to them. They were not successful in building this tower to reach up to God. God had come down to them. Just like our verse that all have sinned and fall short. People, mankind had fallen short at that time too in building this tower. And because they tried to really steal God's glory, which they do not deserve. Out of curiosity, I am just wondering how it is with you, how it is with your life. Do you ever try to steal God's glory? You're probably like, I don't even understand what that means. Well, let's think through a couple of scenarios where it may be possible that you're trying to steal God's glory. So, for example, maybe in kids' choir, or a solo group, or is sharing a poem in church, and you're doing that so that people notice you, so they can see what a beautiful voice you have, or how lovely you speak in Ukrainian, and how you can say these poems, and um, maybe as, you know, singing in choir, that they can see you, then really, what you're doing is you're trying to make your name great. You're trying to be noticed. You want to be important, and that's, that's, that's stealing God's glory because God is the one who's given you that voice. God is the one who's given you that ability. And we should say, thank you, God, and give him all the glory for it. Or maybe perhaps you do pretty good in school. And anytime you get a test and you do great, you say, I got straight A's. I did so good. Like I am just a great student. I'm so smart. And maybe you love it when other people are telling you how smart you are instead of giving God the glory that he gave you the ability to even go to school. He's giving you the knowledge. He's giving you the mind to be able to think and be able to learn. We try to give all the glory to ourselves. Maybe these are a couple things that this is how we tend to try to make a name for ourselves. Just like those people in Noah's time were trying to make a name for themselves. It's now your turn. You go ahead, find some Legos, find some building blocks, whatever you can, and try to build the tallest tower that you can. Have a competition with your siblings, or maybe with your mom or your dad, who can build the tallest tower. And then maybe you can bring in the measurements next week as well. These people, that we just studied, they ignored God's plan, right? So God confused their languages and spread them through all the earth. You know what's so cool though? We get to look forward to when God's gonna undo this. There is one day where at the name of Jesus, every single knee will bow. Every tongue, every tribe, every language, every single person on earth is going to bow before God and praise Him and glorify Him, giving Him the glory that He alone deserves. We can look forward to that time. But in the meantime, let's praise God with everything that we have in our life. The Bible says, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all for the glory of God. God, and also to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is our spiritual act of worship. So we could worship God with our lives, whether we're playing sports or doing homework or playing with a friend and having a, a sleepover, whatever it is, we can do it all for the glory of God. Before I let you go, I want to let you know that on Sunday, you can go ahead and pick up your page from your workbook and you'll pick it up. This is your homework that you'll do and you're turning it into your teacher next week. We look forward to seeing you and let's go ahead and close in prayer. God, thank you so much that you are a wonderful creator, God, that you have created us with all sorts of gifts and abilities that we can offer back to you as, as praise and give you all the glory with all that we do. I pray that this week, we remember that when we do something well, we can say thank you, Jesus, for the ability that you've given us, and may your name be glorified. In all things, God, may we not try to steal your glory, but just like the people building the Tower of Babel who had rebelled, we all have gone our own way, but may we choose to follow you and to go be in alignment with you, to do what you say, because you want what's best for us. We thank you, Lord, for it all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. Have a good week.